basic configuration of OpenWRT on the ECOA IK-S1. Now on part 1, we have flashed the vanilla OpenWRT on this router and now we will configure it. But I also created my own OpenWRT image. I just installed extra packages such as uh, WireGuard, OpenVPN, and M13. Now I just followed the OpenWRT wiki on this one. So if you have the skills to do that, well, feel free to do so because it will uh, make space on your storage. Now, now, if you can't, you can just install it on the web dashboard. Now, in my case, again, I have created the image. So we'll just flash that. Navigate to system backup flash firmware scroll down below you should see a flash image button now click that browse for the file click open and hit upload you will be prompt to whether keep the settings or not so i'll just uncheck that because i have installed uh, other packages too so it may cause a conflict so click continue and this will flash the image and it might take a while so in my case it looks like uh, five minutes so after this uh, the router should automatically restart and you should now be able to log in back to the web dashboard and here is the web dashboard and you can see the 64 megabyte ram is almost used because i might have installed a lot of packages so we will just uh, try to remove those packages later on. So 64 megabytes of RAM is no longer recommended in the OpenWRT nowadays. So if you will buy this device, I suggest you to not do it, but pick something like 128 megabyte or better 512 megabytes of RAM. Now this is just the log. So this is my customized build of the image. We'll check also this new feature or the traffic monitor because this should help people to check the usage of the data or the LAN if you are on an LTE modem or a piece of Wi-Fi or something. And if you have installed many packages, the UI will feel slow like on what you see here. Now this tab is for the wireguard status if you use that uh, VPN but in this one it's empty because we have not configured it. Now for the M1, this is a useful uh, feature because this should allow you to set a failover internet in case your primary internet goes down. Now the primary internet here is called 1 and the backup is the 1B. Now we will configure this later. Since this uh, router has one LAN and one, one port, the 1B will be a Wi-Fi. Now let's go to system. Uh, in this uh, tab, we can set the host name of the device. It is always default to open WRT and the time zone so you can make sense of the log files. You can change that to Asia Manila if that is your location. Now go to administration and you are prompt to change this router password. Now I suggest so you do not just put admin in this password because that is a very common one. And for the sake of the video demonstration, we will just put admin on this one. Now for the SSH, if you use this, well, you can just log in with the same password as the dashboard. Or if you have the keys or public keys, you can also use that because using the SSH keys are much more secure than using the web dashboard password. Now let's go to LED configuration. Now on this uh, device, we only have one LED but it is barely visible on the outside. So I check it or I set it to heartbeat so I can see if the device is still working. Now these uh, highlighted boxes are the ones that are working on this device. The blue, green and red. So for example, we set this to green click save and then delete the other uh, LEDs because they don't work so let's delete we can configure this later but for the sake of the test we just set it to heartbeat now click save and apply and 
you can see the actual uh, LED heartbeat. Now we can check the open VPN tab and again we have not configured it but you can configure it here we can go to software so I will install the necessary packages that I have installed when building the firmware image that is causing the RAM to be almost empty so the Lucy app statistics should provide us a graphical status for the device but in this case it is eating too much RAM so I'm gonna remove it and the next one would be the uh, HTTPS DNS proxy so just remove that because this costs also CPU and RAM and then reboot afterwards or restart this will start the router so after restarting we will just log in back to the interface or to the dashboard using the admin password that we set earlier and as you can see 51% used a significant amount I guess just browsing we can set Wi-Fi schedule if you want users to not be able to use the Wi-Fi after office hours so it will also lock you out of the Wi-Fi so you can configure the device via LAN now wake on LAN I haven't used this but it can set up to wake other devices over the LAN but I never really used this so I just installed it for fun so now on the interfaces we have the LAN 1 and 1.6 So if you want to set the IP address for the LAN interface, you should go here. You can click the edit button to change it and specify your IP before address and the net mask. To the advanced settings, you can set the firewall zone, DHCP, you can set the default ones. Now on the one, this will be our port that is connected to the upstream internet so you can change also the settings the DNS the gateway the firewall zone the interface again at ETH1 so it's configured automatically for us but if you want to change something you just go there for the wireless one we have to set this one up because by default OpenWRT does not advertise the Wi-Fi so just click edit set the ESSID or the access point name for example Wi-Fi the security WPA2 PSK AES and the Wi-Fi password uh, for example 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 for the Mac filter you can set that up if you want only devices be able to connect or not connect and then click Save now if you have other devices that have 5 gigahertz capability you will see another interface here like Radio 1 and then 802.11ac but in this one we don't have that also click enable to start the broadcasting of the Wi-Fi access point that we have created so this one we just set the transmission power to 26 dB which is a high value for Wi-Fi transmission and of course don't forget to hit save Now let's go to DHCP and DNS settings. So in this tab we can configure DNS forwarding if you want to use a custom DNS server. We can also set the static IP of the clients that are connected to the router on this tab. If you want to change them. So now let's go to SQM or the QoS, quality of service. But first let's check my current speed. 
on. By the way, this router is only 100 megabit Ethernet capable, so it will be limited by the RAM and the other application usages. So in this case, you can see 78 Mbps on the download speed. We'll enable the SQM for 1 and change it to 10 Mbps on download and upload. I mistakenly set save already, so we'll just wait for this and set this querying discipline to cake and piece of cake. Because that handles buffer bloat much better than the other ones. Now click save again and we will test the speed back to the fast.com. Okay, so let's test the speed. Where do the test? And as you can see, it is limited to 10 Mbps maximum. Even on the upload speed, it's limited to around 10 Mbps. So you can change this to whatever you want, but on this device, I would recommend an internet that is only 100 Mbps. Now we will try to add another wireless or the failover connection through wireless. So on this one, click scan and choose your other Wi-Fi. and click join network so enter here 1b and then the password of the wi-fi and then click submit save save and apply So now we are now connected to the secondary or the backup Wi-Fi or the internet and we will now configure the load balancing. So just checking the interface. So again you can change these settings, the DNS server and others. So let's go to the load balancing now. Edit the 1B. Hit enable and then save and apply. So let's go to the policies. I'll just check it and the rules. Now on the rules, this will take precedence on which internet the system will go. For example, on this IPv6, I do not use this so I can just drop the connections. But if you have a PLDT connection, it can use IPv6. So on HTTPS or Purportree, we can set this to 1, 1B or 1B1. So on 1B underscore 1, it will connect first to the 1B interface before trying to connect to the 1 if 1B is not available. So a failover. So the same thing to the IPv4. Just hit save and apply. So in this case, 1B will take priority of the internet before going back or falling back to the 1.
So to test this, I have uh, set this ping on the command prompt. So we are currently connected to the 1B. And my 1B has a 30 Mbps speed limit. As you can see, the ping started to go up because we are connected via Wi-Fi and not via LAN. So if you want a more stable one, you should definitely use the LAN or if you have a 5 GHz one, use that interface. But to test this one, we will use the 2.4 GHz. So checking the load balancing again. It may take a week. So I disconnected the one interface, so the system went to 1B. So let's change the rules this time. I'll now set priority to 1, then 1B. So this means the internet will go through the LAN port or the 1 port before going to the backup or the 1B wireless one. So checking the speed again. We are limited to 9.6 Mbps because we set earlier the 10 Mbps SQM for the one interface. Let's go to the firewall tab. So on this tab, you can configure port forwarding and other stuffs. Traffic rules, you can block stuffs here or allow some stuffs. By default, everything is allowed. Let's check again the VN stat monitor. And as you can see, we have used already 255 megabytes of internet or megabits of internet. You can set which to monitor here. And we have used 62% of the RAM. This ends the tutorial and thank you for watching. If you have questions, comment down below. And also don't forget to subscribe.